In September, the EU announced its new pact on migration and asylum. It signalled sweeping changes to the way member states are expected to handle the arrival of asylum seekers and migrants at European borders. But the pact has drawn criticism. Under the new proposals, the emphasis on pre-screening centres at external borders will enable member states to carry out mass incarceration and expulsions. Meanwhile, the absence of a truly independent and effective monitoring mechanism raises questions as to how potential abuses in detention could be challenged. Here, we unpack the new proposals by the EU. We'll examine how the detention of migrants and asylum seekers is already a precursor for violent forced removals, and how the new pact seeks to provide a formal stage for these practices. The Border Violence Monitoring Network has observed for years how detention and pushbacks go hand in hand. Pushbacks are the removal of individuals or groups from one territory to another without formal procedures such as access to asylum, translation or legal advice. They differ from deportations which are conducted within a legal framework. During the brief humanitarian corridor of 2015, states facilitated transit through southeastern Europe in a formalized way. However, following the closure of this route, there has been an exponential rise in pushbacks over the past five years, with states turning to detention as the first resort for new arrivals. In practice, this means that people are captured at borders and interiors and taken to local police stations, detention centers and other state facilities. These places have become stepping stones within the pushback process as they are used for removals to neighbouring countries, which often involve high levels of violence and breaches of international law. So how does this link to the pact? Under the new proposals, the responsibility for processing arrivals into EU territory will be delegated to border authorities. This will occur in new pre-screening centres on the external border. The landscape of asylum and migration management will shift with authorities carrying out fast-tracked procedures in order to identify what they consider credible asylum claims, while detaining and removing those with supposedly unfounded claims. There are concerns that the existing violations in detention spaces across the interiors of member states will be replicated and intensified at the border. These deficits in asylum law and fundamental rights cannot be addressed in a simple geographic change. Instead, entry points to the EU will become de facto holding sites for refugees and asylum seekers who would be arbitrarily detained in an effective limbo at the border. So what is going on in detention? Grave issues have already been identified over the conditions at existing facilities, including violence, deplorable conditions and insufficient access to food and healthcare. Indeed, closed detention sites, known as transit zones, at the Hungarian border were closed this year after systemic and torturous abuses were uncovered, particularly in the starving of detainees. To understand how these rights suspensions will happen, we must turn to three key features of the pact. One major issue is with the compressed time limits on assessing asylum claims. During pre-screening, people could be held for between three to five days. This both represents an arbitrary restriction on movement, as open facilities could be used, and sparks doubt over the effectiveness of an asylum procedure that offers such a short window for assessing cases. Importantly, the new pact states that in periods of crisis, states can extend this time limit, providing for an open-ended period of detention. Another worry is the lack of access to legal remedies. Within such a compressed time period, there are likely to be severe barriers on appealing a decision in the pre-screening process. With an existing lack of legal remedies in the current detention systems of member states, it seems far-fetched to believe that the new fast-track system will offer anything different. A more fundamental question is who would have oversight of detention? The new pact promises independent monitoring mechanisms to ensure EU states comply with fundamental rights at the borders. However, while the move has been welcomed by human rights watchdogs, doubts remain as to whether effective monitoring will be carried out by individual states. The Border Violence Monitoring Network calls for truly independent monitoring mechanisms, which involve NGOs and are funded directly by an independent agency. Greater transparency within police forces and an alarm system for potential asylum seekers where their fundamental rights are violated would be welcome additions. Yet a more fundamental question remains. Is detention really the way to receive migrants and asylum seekers at the EU's borders? 